It's the tradition of Christians for the past 2,000 years to celebrate baptism in the season following Easter. Easter being Resurrection Sunday and that season lasting about 50 days to a day we call Pentecost when we celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. And during that time period, the tradition is to celebrate baptisms because those lives were changed by what occurred on Easter. There's a direct correlation around the church that we were once dead in our sin and now alive in Christ. And so we celebrate Easter following that time. And if you were with us last week, we started a new series called Reverse the Curse. We're pretty creative with our rhyming around here. And Reverse the Curse is about the effect of sin, on our, sin in our lives, but then the freedom that we find from that. And so if you're new here today or weren't here last week, I'd encourage you to go ahead and watch that first message. But to quickly summarize it, we discussed this concept of sin that Christians talk about. Sin being a thing that holds us in bondage, that the Bible says leads to death, that separates us from God. That is an active force in our world today affecting the entirety of creation, that, that keeps us as a slave to itself, that sin keeps us in bondage. And we summarize it by just saying sin is a curse that affects everything. But when we come to baptism, we're celebrating the freedom from that. We're celebrating that we no longer are in that curse, but it has been reversed in our lives and we are freed from it. And so when we dunk somebody in the water and bring them back out, and when you're wondering if they're going to make it or we're going to cause them to drown, we're celebrating that they're no longer dead, but that they are actually alive. That's an exciting day. I get excited about it just thinking about it. It says in Romans chapter 10 that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And Paul wrote that declaring that the good news of Jesus is a new life. If we haven't met yet, my name is Pastor Cable and I'm the middle school pastor here at Revive Wesleyan. And it's a joy to speak to you this morning. We're gonna be camping out if you have your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter five. So if you wanna turn there, we're gonna be there in just a moment. But I'm sure you've picked up on it because we've been talking about it. We're celebrating baptism. That's why there's a big pool in the front of the room. And we're going to have people who come forward and declare that their lives are different because of Jesus. And we're going to baptize them today, which means we're going to put them under the water and pull them back out. It's a really exciting day, but if you go to a bunch of churches, and I'm assuming that many of you have been to Pentecostal churches and Catholic churches and Baptist churches and all these other places, we, every denomination probably has a different definition of baptism. There's a lot of Bible passages that speak about this thing that we celebrate. We have been celebrating for 2,000 years as Christians. And so there's sometimes a little argument and controversy over what baptism is. So as a denomination, we do have a definition of baptism. It's very simple. I'm going to read it to you. This isn't to say if you grew up in a different church tradition that what they taught you is necessarily wrong. This is just the parameters with which we understand baptism. It's how we want to kind of have our discussion about it today. So the Wesleyan Church, which is our denomination, we're Revive Wesleyan Church. The Wesleyan is the name of our denomination. It's not some random word we pulled out of nowhere. We define it this way. Baptism is not itself the door to salvation, but rather it is an outward sign of the new birth which God has wrought in the believer's heart. In other words, God has changed something within us. God has forged something, created something, made something in the believer. And we're celebrating that in baptism. It goes on to say that it proclaims to all the world that a person has taken Jesus Christ as the Lord of their lives and that their purpose is to obey him. See, baptism signifies this life that's been changed, that's been transformed. It signifies that something is different about that person. As a staff, we often celebrate stories when we hear people who've made decisions for Jesus or something has changed in their lives or they've been freed from an addiction or some sin has been abandoned. We call those as a staff revived stories, not because our church name is super cool, though it is, but we call it revived stories because they have been brought to life in Christ because they have been changed, transformed, that there is something new about them. The Apostle Paul wrote this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
there is a new, the new creation has come. The old is gone and the new is here. I'll read it again. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Paul wasn't writing some abstract concept to people. He was very focused on practical living. He was very focused on how do you apply your faith? How do you behave because you're a Christian? How do you interact with other people? What does it mean to be a Christian? And so when he wrote this, it wasn't some random thought he pulled out of the ether, but it was something that he had experienced himself. A truth that he could stand on and share with other people saying, something is different when you've met Jesus. Paul's story is one of incredible transformation. We're introduced to a man who is a Pharisee in the book of Acts, and he, it, that means he's a Jewish religious leader. And his job is to teach other people about faith, about what it means to follow God. But then this other group of Jews start following a man named Jesus. And there is a violent reaction among the Jewish community to that. They start murdering Christians and persecuting them and throwing them in jail and harming them. And Paul is a part of that group doing harm to others. In fact, the Jewish religious leaders who are above Paul signed papers approving his work, saying, keep doing this. This is what we want you to do. And so Paul took those papers and we're, we find him on a journey to a place called Damascus, where he's going with the literal purpose of imprisoning and killing Christians. Those who've said, I'm going to follow Jesus. And on that journey, something changes for him. It says in Acts chapter 9, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell on the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, he replied. Now get up and go into the city and you'll be told what you must do. So first of all, Paul and Saul are the same person. I did not misspeak there. It'd be like somebody named Yanni in English. That's just John. Saul and Paul are the same name in two different languages. We just end up with both in the Bible because it's written in multiple languages. And we're translating it into English. And so Saul, also called Paul, had this radical experience where this light showed up and this voice spoke out of the sky to him. And he went to the city called Damascus, but he didn't do what he went out to do. Instead, he went to a house and it says he fasted it, which means he didn't eat anything and he prayed for three days. And a man named Ananias came to him and performed a miracle. He restored Paul's sight because Paul had been blinded. And then Paul left that place preaching. It says he went and started immediately teaching. And if you go and look at his sermon content, he preaches multiple times in the book of Acts. And then if you go and read a bunch of the New Testament, which he wrote most of, you'll see a lot of his like miniature sermons in writing. And a huge part of his message to people was that something was different about him. He kept pointing back to that experience in Damascus. He would go and teach other people, I was this person before. I harmed people. I killed people. I, I was part of the, this group who did harm to others. But then I met Jesus and something changed. I used to speak this way and talk this way and think this way, but then I encountered a person named Jesus who others had said resurrected and something was different in my life where I no longer behaved that way or thought that way or spoke that way. Something was definitely different about me. If you go and read his writing, that's what Paul is saying over and over and over. Something is different. Something is new. There was an old me and now there's a new me. There was a way I behaved before and there's a way I now behave. He, he was talking about this transformation he had experienced, this new life he had found, that the person he was did not exist, but there was a new version of himself that was found in Christ that had been empowered by the Holy Spirit, and now he was sharing his faith with others. And when he wrote to the Corinthians, he was writing exactly that. The old is gone, the new is here. If anyone's in Christ, they're a new creation. The old is gone, the new is here. It's his own story. But if you reflect on that, and if you've called yourself a Christian or you've had an experience where 
you feel like Jesus met with you or a pastor was preaching and, and you raised a hand to say, I want to follow Jesus, or you read a book and somebody convicted you, you had a conversation with mom and dad around the kitchen table. Maybe it was at a camp or, or reading the Bible yourself or listening to a podcast. I don't know when or where it was. But if you call yourself a Christian, you've had an experience with God. Where, where your heart changed, where something was different about you, where, where you said, I'm no longer going to be who I was, but I'm different now. That, that I've experienced something that I can't keep to myself because everything is new. All things are new within me because of Jesus. You see, you are the new creation if you follow Jesus. The old is gone and the new has come in you. This isn't something that we talk about in the past. This isn't something for other people, but it is about you, about the church, about all of us having experienced something with Jesus where we met him and he changed us within our hearts, within our minds, with our souls. And we started behaving and talking differently. And we started to look for the good in the world and started introducing people to this man named Jesus who could forgive their sins and call them into new life. That's what it means to be the new creation. And so when we come to a moment like baptism, we're being called to remember that ourselves. This is us remembering our baptism when others are baptized. It's us remembering that we were once lost, but now we're found. It's us remembering that we were once blind, but now we see. It's us saying, I was once the old, but now I'm the new. And we celebrate that alongside those who are experiencing it for the first time in baptism. And that propels us outward in our memory and our behavior to go share that story with others. Because Paul goes on in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. He says, all this is from God who reconciled himself through Christ, reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. If you remember that definition I read earlier, it said that God wrought this within us. That baptism isn't salvation, but it's something God has done within us. And it also said that we are now given purpose to obey him. That purpose is to go share our faith with others. That purpose is to invite others into the same reconciliation we have experienced. It's to go share with the world and proclaim that Jesus has changed me and he can change you too. I have been found in Christ and it has changed everything and it's an invitation to others. It's a call to say, my purpose is different and I will be obedient to Christ because of what he's done in my life. It's not that being obedient to Christ saves you, but it is the purpose we're given after following him. It's not that you find Christ because you're a really good person, but Jesus forgives the sins in our lives and invites us to live differently. So when we come to baptism, we're celebrating that proclamation in our lives. And these people are saying, I am that person who is made new. And it's always an invitation us to remember and experience again ourselves. I started this message by sharing that baptism is traditionally done during the season of Easter, following Easter. And the reason for that, it is because Jesus forgives our sins at Easter, but it's also because it's the season of resurrection. Spring is around us and, and things are coming to life, but that's only in the Northern hemisphere. What I mean by that is that Jesus resurrected and then he invites us into new life. That the symbol of baptism is that we go under the water and we die to who we were. We're washed clean. We're made different. That, that who we were dies beneath the water and is put in the tomb alongside Jesus. And coming up out of the water, we are resurrected to new life. Baptism is, is the sacrament where we celebrate our own resurrection in Jesus, our own new life, our own revival in Jesus. And we get to watch others come to new life and celebrate that and tell their own stories of how Jesus made me new, how I am different because of Jesus. And so as we read these stories today, it's a celebration. As we hear these stories read, as we watch these people be baptized, it's a call to us to remember our own baptism and to invite others to experience the reconciliation of God. It's the sacrament, it's the symbol of the old made new. Jesus was baptized himself and something changed about him then. It says that when Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, 
as he came up out of the water, the Father in heaven spoke, calling him his son, and the Holy Spirit descended on him. And it's from that moment that Jesus begins his preaching ministry, his traveling ministry, his miracles. Something was different after the moment of his baptism. And we read then about a eunuch who was from Ethiopia traveling along a roadside and a Christian met him and preached to him. And that Ethiopian said, well, if this is true, why am I not baptized now? And he gets up and is baptized right there. And then we read about family after family, person after person in Acts who meet Jesus through his church, through the new creation, through miraculous experiences. And they say, well, everything's new in me. Why should I not be baptized? We see whole families experience this. One of the church fathers named Justin Martyr wrote in an apology um, where he's explaining the faith to others. He explains baptism here and he says, those who believe what we teach and are willing to live accordingly are instructed to ask God in prayer and in fasting to forgive their sins. And we in pray, we pray and fast with them. That's the church coming around them, celebrating with them, longing for that same experience that we've had, that same moment with God, that same transformation. We pray and fast with them. And then they're brought to a place where there's water and they are bathed in the name of God the Father and the Lord of all and of our Savior Jesus Christ and of the Holy Spirit. And we're going to do exactly that today. We're going to bathe people in the name of the Lord and the Savior, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit and celebrate the new life that they've experienced. And so, as I said to the first service, this is not a moment to stay in your seat. This is a moment to hoot and holler and celebrate and jump up and down and proclaim that God made me new and look, he's made others new too. And then we should go and be sent into our world and proclaim this ministry of reconciliation that we were once lost and now we're found. That we were once dead in our sin and now we're alive in Christ. That the old has gone in us and the new has come. And so from here, we're gonna sing one more song as the baptismal candidates get ready to be baptized, as I run to the back and change. And then we're gonna come out here and we're gonna baptize six people today. And across campuses, 12, across services, 12 people have been baptized or will be baptized today. And that's something to celebrate. So I encourage you, let's celebrate these lives that have been changed and brought to newness in Christ today. Would you pray with me? God, you've met us before and you'll meet us again. And allow each of us to re-experience that moment where you made us new and you're still making us new now, God. That we, the church, the people of God, those who call you our Father and Savior, that we would share this ministry of reconciliation with others. And that our stories would cause others to come to know you. That that our declaration that I was in the old and I'm in the new now would be transformative for others. We thank you for those who are proclaiming their faith through baptism today. And we're expecting of you to continue moving in this service. We pray all this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We are so excited for this moment. I hope you will join in me as we pray and as we cheer and as we encourage. But just take a moment before each baptism to really hear the faith stories of how God is working in these individuals. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kim Smith, and I am a friend of Patty's. Here is Patty's faith story. I have loved Jesus since childhood. Because I was born with cerebral palsy, I wasn't too sure of his love for me. I had a performance-based theology that seeped into the areas, all other areas of my life as well. I made some really poor decisions. When the pressure of trying to be perfect caught up with me, I was hospitalized for severe depression. The move back to Hamburg was a painful one. I felt like I had lost everything. God was blessing me. I was just too stuck in my loss to see his hand. I had a loving family and a roof over my head. Jesus also led me to the right medical team. So what was I missing? Pastor John Horton advised me that Christian friends would help me through my journey. 
volunteering at Revive in the Hub with the prayer team and the trading post not only gave me new friends, but service to others was also changing my perspective. I have peace of mind. I have peace with myself. And finally, for the first time in my life, I have peace with the Lord. The circumstances. The circumstances of my life do not define me. Jesus does. Amen. And when tough times come, and I forget that, I have some wonderful pastors and friends to remind me. Patty Breen, do you desire to declare that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and do you desire today to be baptized in recognition of that? Yes. All right. Would you lean your head back against the baptismal for me? I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Debbie's closest cousin, so we're more like sisters. <laughs> and bear with me, I hope I can get through this. <laughs> um, I can't pinpoint the exact moment when I learned about God or really understood Jesus' sacrifice. I just know that as a child, I was in awe of God and wanted to know so much more about Him. I can remember feeling confident in my faith and God's love for me. But as I grew up, I got distracted by the world around me. I strayed from my faith and that closeness I had felt. I still believed in God and I knew my heart, in my heart Jesus had died for me and my sins. But I continued to put myself first. This often left me hollow and lost. I'd find myself bouncing back and forth. I'd find refuge in God's word and going to church and then I'd slip back into being self-serving. I didn't realize how this was weighing down my soul until I had the despairing thought of what if I never make the time? Or worse, what if I'm too late to build that relationship that deep down I knew I wanted? That really shook me. I'm here now because I'm committing to no longer living my life being lost or lukewarm in my faith. I choose to change my life to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Since making this decision, I have felt such a shift and can see who I want to be through Christ. It's like seeing the world with a new set of eyes. Through him, I have begun to find fulfillment and peace I've never known before. And through him, I want to set an example for my children and help them grow in their faith. I am excited for the life God has in store for me. All right, everybody, this is Devin. Hi. <laughs> Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and is it your desire to be baptized today? Yes, it is. All right. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you so much, Jesus, for this moment. Thank you, God, for Deborah and all the change you have done in her life. We pray that she will continue to show your love, joy, and peace everywhere she goes. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. <laughs> all right. I'm Curtis, and I'm Janine's husband. Here is Janine's faith story. Before I had a relationship with Jesus, I was lost, hurting, and afraid. I began inching toward Jesus five years ago, at which point I started to learn that life is a lot better with him in it. And once I started attending Revive last spring, I started sprinting towards Jesus. 
Today, I take the brakes off that stop me from fully accepting his love, and I publicly declare that Jesus is my Lord and Savior. In Jesus, there is indescribable peace, love, and joy. There is home. Thank you, Jesus. I stand humbly in front of you, the Lord, to say, I thank you. I'm sorry, and to promise every single piece of myself to you forever. I love you. Amen. All right, everybody, this is Janine. Janine, have you accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and is it your desire to be baptized today? Yes. All right. Then in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we baptize you. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you so much for Janine and the amazing change that we see in her life. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be powerfully present in her and everyone around her will see that. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm Jen. This is Ed and we are Walter's parents. Here is Walter, Walter's faith story. Walter came to our family when he was six years old. Before coming to us, he was in foster care. He experienced many hardships in his little life as he was in six different placements before us. The first day Walter came to live with us, he asked about a pair of God's hands in our home and has since been inquiring, praying, and asking others, do you know about God? We have all prayed hard, even some of you have prayed with us, that adoption would make Walter forever part of our family. We held on tight to God's plan. <laughs> and on June 24, 2021, Walter was adopted. <laughs> that day, he read to his friends and family how God has a plan for all of us, a plan to prosper and not to harm you, a plan for hope and for a future. When asked what his life was like before and after knowing Jesus, Walter replied, Before, I didn't know Jesus, and I didn't know who to follow. Now, when I see a dark path, I don't want to go down it. I want to go down the light path to follow Jesus where I help people. When I'm on the light path, I'm so close to seeing Jesus, and I know he helps me. <laughs> All right, everybody, this is Walter. Walter, have you made Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life, and do you desire to be baptized today? Yes. All right. All right, all right. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. change in his life and his family life. We pray that your Holy Spirit will be powerfully with him, showing that love, joy, and peace forever. Amen. Amen. My name is Kristen, and I'm Caleb's mom. Here is Caleb's faith story. Before Jesus was the president of my heart, I didn't always want to do the right thing. After Jesus became the president of my heart, my life feels like the way it was supposed to be. My life is really better. I know God is always with me during the hard times and will help me get through them. Sometimes when I pray, I can see holy things like Jesus being there with me. God was telling me in my mind to be baptized. All right, everybody, this is Caleb. This is a very, very special moment for me. This is my son. <laughs> Caleb, have you accepted Jesus as the Lord and Savior of your life, and do you desire to be baptized today? Yes. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Let's pray. Thank you so much, Jesus, for Caleb and the change that you have done in his life. We pray that your love and light will shine brightly through him all the days of his life. Amen. Good job, buddy. Johnny and I'm Richie's brother. Here's Richie's faith story. I was brought up in a Christian home. As I attended church and started following God, I started doing better at school, at sports, and other things. My Christian friends have helped my faith grow. I accepted Christ at age eight and will continue to follow him as my savior for the rest of my life. So Richie, is it your desire to share with these people here today that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, and do you desire to be baptized today to show that faith? Yes. All right, man. Then we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, thank you for Richie and the life change that he's experienced in your spirit, and we pray that the old would truly be gone and the new has come in him, and that he would be a light to those around him. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. amen. Hi, I'm Rick, and uh, I'm Johnny's dad. Um, here's John's faith story. My journey with Christ started when I was about six and I started going to church. I'd go to youth classes and have a great time with friends while learning about Christ. I brought new friends in all the time and they loved it, even if they didn't usually go to church. Once I got older, I started going to the hub and I really started to pay attention and, and attending retreats. Once my relationship with God was very strong, I can see the effects in my life. He has always protected me and kept me safe. Christ has always had a huge presence in my athletic career, keeping me so safe and helping me through my journey. I will forever follow Christ and keep faith in him. John, is Jesus Christ your personal Lord and Savior and you desire to be baptized today as a witness to that? Yeah. And today we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. John, and the change that's happened in his life, that he is a witness to you and his sports teams and in the community around him. And we pray that he would be empowered by your spirit to go and share this ministry of reconciliation with others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. Amen. I'm Rachel. I'm Jessica's sister. Here is her faith story. It has been on my mind and in my heart to be baptized for a while, but what was holding me back was the feeling that I didn't have this inspiring, compelling faith story. But I've come to realize that my faith story is important because it has led me here to do this today. I grew up in this church and am blessed to have grown up in a family that instilled Christian values and love for the Lord. Throughout my life, there have been trials and triumphs times when I felt very close to God and remembered to thank him for his many blessings, and times when I felt ashamed to admit that I had strayed and knew I needed to draw closer to him. Ephesians 3.20 says, All glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or imagine. Every step of the way, this has rung true in my life. God always answers prayers. He is always with me, and even when I know I don't deserve it, he forgives me and holds me close. My daughter's middle names are Faith, Grace, and Hope, because through my faith in the Lord, I know he has given me his grace and forgiveness and hope for the future. 
I want to be baptized today and proclaim publicly that Jesus is my Lord and Savior and be an example for my children, showing them that Jesus died for me and I will live for him. All right, everybody, this is Jessica, and we have Brian here as well. Very special moment for them also. And so, Jessica, have you proclaimed Jesus as your Lord and Savior forever, and do you desire to be baptized today to show that to everybody? Yes. Then we baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray. We thank you so much, God, for Jessica and everything you are doing in her lives and her family's life. And we just pray that you will continually bless, guide, and provide for her. And she will continually put her faith in you. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right. And they'll just be switching places. There we go. Isn't that amazing? All right. Hi, I'm Ava Phil Jones, and I'm Brian's daughter. Here is Brian's face story. <laughs> I was raised in a Catholic household, attending religion classes, Sunday Mass, and was baptized as an infant. However, early in my faith journey, I viewed God as a God of punishment. I was afraid of Him and never felt like I deserved to have a relationship with Jesus because I was a sinner. I eventually became disconnected from my faith and focused on the desires of the world. I often felt alone and empty, surrounded by darkness. Twenty years ago, God placed an amazing woman in my life led me back to faith and guided me to my new relationship with Jesus. The darkness that once saturated my life has faded. My heart has been renewed and my faith made fierce. Jesus has healed me in many ways and performed miracles in my life. He challenges me to be a better person every day. He gives me mercy and grace when I fall short of his glory and is always there to help me back up when I fail. Jesus has shown me a love like no other. He is now the foundation on which I stand and my life belongs to him. All right, everybody, this is Brian. Brian, have you accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and do you desire to be baptized today to show God and the world that? I do. All right. All right. Then I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's pray. Thank you so much, Jesus, for Brian and for everything that you're doing in his life and in his heart. And we just pray that you will powerfully be upon him the whole rest of his life with your love, joy, and peace. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, would you join me in one final prayer for everybody who is baptized today? Again, we thank you so much, God, for the work you are doing in these people's lives. We thank you so much how encouraging it is for us to see and bear witness to that. Help them to be encouraged and help us to all continually see that you are active in this world. And I just pray for everyone baptized today across all of our campuses that you will powerfully continue to be with them and bless them. In Jesus' name, amen.